When you're stepping into a new role, especially a new role like that of a PTO or a PTA president, it can be like, it is one, overwhelming because you are now literally the captain of the ship and that you are in charge of all the things and that is overwhelming and there's probably a lot that you don't know yet. You will get there, but it's going to take some time because like, just like any new role, it comes with different expectations, different responsibilities, different things that you just need to make sure that it's getting done. And so I want to go over some of the responsibilities for PCO presidents just so you know, because it's kind of hard to meet expectations if you don't know about them in the first place. So the things that we're going to be talking about today may or may not be in your group's bylaws that is like written out for the actual PTO president description. But these are things that I think should be included in everybody's job description in some way, because some of these things I think go unsaid, but I really think they should be said. So I'm going to say them today. So let's dive in. The very first thing that you should know as PTO president, and you probably already know this, but just in case, uh, you, my dear, are front and center. Like, All the information should be flowing through you. You as a president are like a juggler. You're just managing all the things, trying to keep all the balls in the air going all at once. You should be clued into pretty much everything. Uh, It should be part of your job description that you are a de facto uh, committee member for all committees except for probably the audit because you are going to be on the bank account probably and the nominating committee. And that's because you kind of in your role as president, have greater influence, whether you know it, whether you exert it or not, it's just kind of implied and not implied, but it's implicit (laughs) that you have more sway over people and that it's going to be hard for people to tell you no. I know people definitely have told me that they have a hard time telling me no, but that could be just because it's me. I don't know. Anyway, just know and expect that everything's going to be coming through you. So that's where it can be a challenge to kind of manage all the things. And there are going to be things that slip through your cracks. Doesn't matter how long you've been doing it. I know I make mistakes all the time uh, because we are just human and there's only so much we can do. So you just do the best job you can do. Just know you're not going to be perfect because that is not actually a thing. The next thing is that you have a gavel or you you might have a gavel. I think I have a gavel as president, but I don't even take it to meetings because that just seems kind of so old school and I don't need it. I have my iron fist, I guess, to waggle at people. I don't actually do that at meetings. I'm very nice, very fun. Uh, But anyway, the whole reason for the gavel is that you as president are the lead discussion facilitator. You're moderating the meeting. You are making sure that things are staying on track and that you're covering all the things on the agenda. You need to be getting the train back on the tracks if people trying to take it off to side discussions. You are paying attention to when there are discussions, if there's been a motion made and that there's subsequent discussion of the motion before voting comes, you know, you want to be like paying attention. And if you notice that the same points are being raised, then maybe you want to be like, hey, I keep hearing the same thing. Are we ready to vote on this? Get the consensus from the room. If the majority of the people are ready to vote, then that is what needs to come next. The next thing that should actually, this is not in any description I have ever read for president, but it's kind of, it's totally implied, but important to say that you need to be a rule follower. So you need to follow all of the rules and procedures, not only of your PTO, but also for your school too, because, and your district, like you just need to be following the rules. You need to be the leader who is doing all the right things. Now, what happens if there's like a really stupid rule and you're like, that is so dumb. I shouldn't have to do that. Still follow it, but work to change it because that is what I do. Because like people have told me, oh, you're such a rule follower. And I don't actually think of myself as being a rule follower, but I think I am. But I certainly will move to change the rules that I just think are like absurd. And I'm just like, Ugh, that's annoying. <laughs> I will do it, but I will try and change it. So you do the same. The next thing is super, super, super important. You as president should definitely be on the bank account along with the treasurer and perhaps one or two other volunteers as well. You definitely should be co-signing your checks. Like I think it's a great idea to have more than one check signer. Certainly it makes it easier if you have multiple check signers because then if someone is out of the loop because of a family emergency or something like that, then it's really not 
uh, too big of a deal. You can find someone to sign the checks. You have a second set of eyes to make sure that everything is happening like it should. A huge issue that has cropped up is that scammers are getting the email addresses of PTO leaders and they are spoofing. Like this has happened in my group where I've gotten an email from allegedly the treasurer, but it wasn't the treasurer because like she doesn't talk like this, asking for me to call or do something or whatever. I just, I knew it was a trash and or a scam and deleted it. These scammers are harvesting the email addresses that we are putting so that parents can contact us on our school websites or maybe our PTO websites. They're harvesting those email addresses and are putting them into this program that can like send each other messages. And in some cases, people have gotten tricked by this and treasurers have sent money to the scammer. I mean, under the guise of it being like for a family fun event or teacher appreciation or whatever. So anyway, my point is it is great to have more than one set of eyes on each check that is going out to make sure that it is going to the right person. And so you as tre- uh, you as president rather need to be asking questions. Need to, like if you don't remember hearing that there's going to be a bounce house at the senior send off, but you're writing a check to Cleveland Bouncers, you know, dot com. Like you're going to be asking those questions. Like, why are we sending this to them? Like, just there's nothing wrong with asking questions. But know that it that totally falls under your purview is to help manage the finances of the group and just be an accountable person. The next thing you as president are in charge of is setting the schedule for the year. So this doesn't mean that you are in charge of running all the events, but you just need to get everybody on the same page, like literally get a planning calendar out, get and write down all the events and then ask your secretary to maybe put it in a prettier form if that is in their wheelhouse of tech skills, if they can do that. You need to have like a firm picture of what your group is doing. It is super hard to run a PTO if you don't know what's coming up next. Like you always need to have an idea of what the landscape is looking like so that you can prepare accordingly. Oh, and I should say before I go on, I do have another video all about how to put together a planning calendar. And I will drop a link to that video in the description below so you can check that out or it'll be there'll be a link up somewhere. You know how that works. The very last thing that you need to be handling as a PTO president, and this is something that often goes unsaid, is you need to be filling those open positions because if the positions are not filled, and the need for the work to get done like still exists within your group, then it's all going to fall back on you as president. So it really behooves you to get more people involved. And I know I had a video pretty recently about how to get more parents involved. So definitely go check out that video. Maybe I'll drop that one in the description too, because I think it's a really important point to make and to know that you really always need to be looking for volunteers because it'll just you know, many hands make for light work. Like that's totally a saying, right? So it's true for PTO too. So just keep that in mind. So I hope this has been super helpful for you as maybe a new president or an existing president. If you're feeling like something is missing, make sure that you're doing all these things. Because I think if you you are covering what we discussed here today, then you're going to be really on the mark for what needs to be happening for you in your role. Um, Of course, there's other things too, but these are like the big kind of big things that you need to be paying attention to. So I hope you really enjoyed this video and that you also join me for the next one. Want even more guidance on how to be a stronger leader so you can run a better PTO or PTA? All of these resources and more are waiting for you at ptoanswers.com.